प्रादि था है और ब्रह्म सूत्र ब्रह्म संहिता आलूल चंद्र कल सदुनमान वंशी Absolute truth 
his first and the Mahavadi philosophers, they say the absolute truth is impersonal. That is the defense. Otherwise, their process of uh, uh, other paraphernalia execution of understanding is almost the same. Now, <coughs> our Vaishnava philosopher's argument is that how the absolute truth can be impersonal. Because Yet, in this world, in our experience, we see everything personal. So unless the personality, the individuality, or the individual attraction is there in the absolute truth, how they can be represented here in the relative truth? So, apart from that argumental point of view, uh, our presentation is that this conjugal love between man and woman is not unnatural. It is quite natural because it is in the absolute truth. As we find from Vedic description that the absolute truth personality of Godhead is engaged in conjugal loving affair. Radha but the same Radha Krishna love matter has permeated through matter, therefore it is parabhata reflection. Here in this material world, the so-called love is not actual love, it is lust. Here the male and female are attracted not by love, but by lust. So, in this Krishna consciousness society, because we are trying to approach the absolute truth, the lust propensity has to be converted into pure love. That is the purpose. <coughs> so, in India, still among the strict followers of Vedic principles, this lust affair is adjusted spiritually. What is that? That the boys and girls, they are not allowed free mixing before marriage. Especially uh, both the boys. Uh, here, one of our students, he was in India and he tried to talk with a young girl on the street and he was insulted. He was surprised because the practice is there that no young boy or young girl can talk with a personality different. Even up to our young time, we have seen that without being married, no girl, no boy could mix together. So this lust affair, this attraction, was little bit controlled. The father, the parents of the girl, and the parents of the boy would select. They had no personal selection. And that selection was made very scientific. Taking the horoscope of the girl, taking the horoscope of the boy, and uh, calculating how this boy and girl will amalgamate, how their lives will be happy. So many things they are considered. And when everything was settled, then the marriage is taken. That is the system of old Indian uh, Vedic principles. And uh, so far, Sri Love is concerned, as we understand, that was allowed only very in high circle, in princely order. Uh, 
because the girls were educated and grown up and she was given to select her husband but not direct we find in so many historical evidences from the vedic literature that the girls used to express her desire that i want to marry with the spouse and the father this was among the chatriyas the princely order not with her and the father would keep a challenge a bet and if somebody will come and become victorious then the girl will be offered that was in special case anyway in this age marriage <coughs> according to our western principles marriage is allowed because there is male there is female why this is not in mind but not illegal so when i came in this country in new york the boys and girls they were coming and some of them offered me to become disciple so i saw that the most of the boys and girls they are keeping the boys and girls there so i requested them that if you want to make progress in spiritual life you have to refrain from four kinds of sinful activities and these four kinds of sinful activities are illicit sex life first second uh non vegetarian diet third intoxication fourth gambling uh, unless one uh, is free from this four things for activity one cannot make progress in spiritual life uh, <coughs> because god is pure pavitram paramam bhava so no impure soul can approach him this body is the sign of impurity because soul has no material body so anyone in this material world who has this material body is to be considered consider as sinful but how to get out of this to get out of it they say everything god telling with spiritual life nirbandhe krishna sambandha jukta vairagam ichcha the example is just like milk if you take too much milk then there will be disorders in the body you will have to pass so many stools but when you approach the physician of course i am speaking of the ayurvedic indian physician if one has got diarrhea a loose bowel then the physician prescribes curd or sugar with some medicine <coughs> now this sugar of curd is also milk preparation so the man who has got a disease by drinking milk he is also cured by the same milk preparation under the direction of the physician and yeah, nobody can argue the patient cannot argue to the physician that i have become diseased by drinking milk and you are prescribing another preparation of the milk yes because it is treated similarly this last propensity between man and woman if it is properly treated then it can turn into a uh, love of god so uh, i am a sannyasi i have renounced my family life i have got my children 
my grandchildren, uh, my wife is still living, but I have separated from them. This is called Sandha. Why I am taking interest again in this family life of my students? Because I want to see them properly progress towards spiritual life. Therefore, although it is not the business of a sannyasi to take part in marriage ceremony, in this country just to save my students, both boys and girls, uh, some sinful activities, I am personally taking interest that they may become uh, good gentlemen and lady by marriage. Uh, <coughs> so I am very happy that those boys and girls who have agreed and they are now married and getting children and they are feeling very happy. Uh, there are many of them are present in this meeting. From their face, from their activities, it appears that they are very happy. So, in this Krishna consciousness society, we have got uh, this program that if some boy or girl uh, wants to get uh, married, uh, I help. So, this marriage ceremony is uh, today arranged on that principle. But the present bride and bridegroom must know it certainly that this marriage is not for sensual activities. This marriage is for purification of life. So there is no question of divorce. There is no question of separation. So don't get into marriage life if you have got such propensity. Our first principle is to become Krishna conscious and other things secondary. Putra Tikya Devhaj. If you can produce nice children, Krishna conscious children, it will do a greatest service to the human society. Because the human society is producing children like cats and dogs, the whole human society is in trouble. How you can expect peace and prosperity in the society of cats and dogs? Therefore, there is necessary. There is necessity to produce children of Krishna Kansa. To train them from the very beginning. Uh, you will be all glad to know that some of our students, uh, very small boys in San Francisco, they are being trained and they are making wonderful progress. So there is no fault of these hippie boys and girls. They have not been trained, not only here, every part of the world, the educational system is not very satisfactory. From the very beginning of their life, they are allowed to mix freely and they are allowed to oh. and, uh, enjoy sex life unrestricted. This is neither good for their health nor for education. Oh. So, therefore, we are getting now the result of education. Yes. Communist and hippies. So people, those who are guardians of the society, should take serious note of it and make life very regulated. What is the necessity of this life is because we have got this material body, we must eat, we must sleep, we must defend, and we must make. These are the demands on this body. But they should be so regulated in Krishna consciousness that it will not be disturbing element, but it shall make progress further and further towards spiritual realization of Krishna consciousness. Therefore, not only uh, the new uh, bride and bridegroom 
I request every one of my students who are present that the aim of man's life is to produce nice things. Krishna calls that is the best service to the human society. Produce nice things. Don't produce cats and dogs. That is my view. Otherwise, don't produce. Uh, remember. Separate. Uh, separate means there is no separation. But uh, don't produce things. That is my request. Putrate pitanasa janani nasasta. In Agama says, one should not become a father, one should not become a mother unless they are able to protect the children from the imminent danger of death. What is that? A cycle of birth and death. If you can train your children to Krishna consciousness, then your child will go back to Godhead in this life. That should be as he will try to go back to Godhead in this life. Similarly, you shall take charge of your children that he can also go in this life back to Godhead. Uh, the mother's and father's duty should be that this child is born out of my home. And it is the last phase of his life to come into the home of any animal of man. No more material body. That should be the responsibility of father. That is the direction of father. So, my dear children, boys and girls, I request you that live happily uh, there is no restriction, we don't restrict eating, sleeping or mating or defending. But do it in relationship with Krishna. Pure life and be happy in this life and next life. Oh, thank you very much. Now.